Hello friends, this video on transport in plants and animals part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this we have covered all the transportation mechanism in animals. So now it is turn for plants. So let us see how exactly transportation happens in plants. So what do you think needs to be transported in plants? Now what do plants need? Now some of the things that plants need are water. Now if you stop watering the plants in your garden for a few days, what happens? The plants start drying up, they, they can eventually even die if you do not water them for quite a few days. So water is one thing that is needed by the plants. Food is another thing which is needed by the plants and that is why they undergo the process of photosynthesis so that they can prepare their food. What else? Now in order to undergo photosynthesis, they also need light. Correct? So basically you can say light, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, all these things are needed for preparation of food. But when, you, when we talk about transport, these are two things which is needed by each and every part of the plant. Water is needed by the leaves, by the branches, by the stem, by the roots. So every plant part of the plant needs water. Similarly, every part of the plant needs food. Now when we say food, food contains all types of nutrients which are needed by the plants. Other than this, the plants also need minerals. These minerals may be calcium, potassium, magnesium, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus and these might be present in the soil. But from the soil, it is needed not only by the roots of the plant, but it is needed to all parts of the plant. So now when we say that these are some of the things water... Now when we say these are some of the things like water, food and minerals which are needed by each and every part of the plant, then we also need to ensure that all these things get transported to different parts of the plant. Because when we talk about soil, which part of the plant is in direct contact with the soil? So this is the soil. So the roots are in direct contact with the soil. So basically water from the soil or minerals from the soil are being directly absorbed by the roots. Now if I want these minerals to reach the leaves of the plant, then how will it go? There has to be some transport mechanism. There has to be something which will carry the minerals from roots to the leaves of the plant. Similarly, when you talk about food, food is prepared by the process of photosynthesis and photosynthesis occurs in the leaves of plant. So photosynthesis occurs somewhere here in the leaves. So basically food is prepared, food which is prepared is in the leaves. But again roots also need the food. So that food needs to be transported from leaves to all other parts of the plant. So who is going to transport all these things? At the same time, we also agree to this fact that since plants are immobile, they do not move from one place to another, therefore their energy requirement is quite less when compared to animals. Therefore, even if the transport system is little slow, that should also be okay for them. But at least there has to be a transport system so that water, minerals and food are able to reach over large distances as some of the plants are quite tall. Now for plants which are very huge trees, for them uh, it is very important that the minerals which are absorbed by the roots get transported to the topmost leaves as well. So there has to be some mechanism. So we do not mind even if the process of transportation is not very fast. So let's see. What do we mean by internal transport in plants? So important needs of plants are water and food. So water is present primarily in the soil. That's why when we water a plant, we put water on the, in the soil. Because soil is able to, the soil particles are, uh, have good capability to hold water and then the plants can absorb water through their root hairs as and when needed. And the other important need is food which is prepared by the process of photosynthesis in the leaves of plants. Now the question is who helps to transport all these things whether it is water or it is food. So for that we have these vascular bundles. So what are the vascular bundles? They are called xylem and phloem. So xylem and phloem help to transport in plants. Like in case of uh, animals, for example, in case of human beings, blood helps to transport substances to different parts of the body because blood flows to, blood reaches every corner. 
of the body. Similarly, in case of plants, these xylem and the phloem, these are also tube-like structures which carry water, minerals and food to various parts of the plant. So we will discuss about xylem and phloem separately because both of them uh, serve separate purpose. So here in this picture you can actually see how a xylem or a phloem looks like. So if you take a cross section of a plant, so in that cross section you can see the layers of xylem and phloem. So I will not get into all these details right now but just for your information if in case you are interested to know where can you see xylem or phloem. So these are uh, often termed as the vessels. They are like vessels, tube like structures which can carry substances from one part to another. So these vascular bundles that is xylem and phloem are exactly like the blood vessels which we have inside our body. So we have the arteries and veins to carry the blood throughout our body. Similarly, these xylem and phloem are also tube-like structure which help in transportation of water, minerals and food to different parts of the plant. So let us look at the functions of xylem and phloem. So first we will discuss xylem. So the job of xylem is to transport water and minerals absorbed by the roots from the soil. So as I said water and minerals they are all present in the soil and which part of the plant is in direct contact with the soil? Roots. So roots absorb water and other dissolved minerals with the help of root hairs. So root hairs are like very thin branches coming out of the roots so they help to absorb water and minerals from the soil but xylem ensures that these water and minerals from the roots get transported to other parts of the plant like leaves or branches or stems so this transportation is handled by xylem and this phenomenon of upward movement of water and minerals from roots to aerial parts is called ascent of sap. Ascent means anything which is moving up. Now in case of plants, roots are always at the bottom. So anything moving from roots to the leaves is actually moving upward. So that is why it is called ascent of sap. Sap is nothing but a material, a fluid like material which contains dissolved minerals and nutrients. So this sap moves upward. So that is why ascent of sap. So that is the job of xylem. So what about phloem? Phloem is involved in transportation of food from leaves to other plant parts. So from leaves, because leaves is the place where photosynthesis take place. Therefore food is prepared in the leaves. But from leaves it needs to reach the roots, stems and branches. So that job is done by phloem. So if you look at xylem, here the transport is unidirectional because the transport happens only in the upward direction. But in case of phloem, it is multidirectional. So uh, the, from leaves, it might get transported to branches which are above the leaves. It might get transported to roots which are below the leaves. So in both directions. So in case of phloem, this is going to be a bidirectional transport. So that is one important difference between xylem and phloem. Now in case of phloem, this phenomenon of transport of food from leaves to other plant parts is called translocation. So the process of transport by xylem is called ascent of sap and the process of transport by phloem is called translocation. So you see xylem and phloem, each of them are given two different duties. So duty to transport water and minerals is up to xylem and duty to transport food is up to phloem. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.